So this is App Dynamics. So what we are, um, we've deployed our application agents onto our applications and we've lit up everything inside of our controller. So on here we've got a number of applications and what we once we auto discover your application, we then auto discover all those great things underneath. So same things like business transactions, the nodes themselves. So we're still interested in all these wonderful metrics like CPU, memory, disk IO, and network IO. What we're going to do is we're going to drill in and show the, the kind of the wow moment that we always get from an app dynamic. So let's go and drill into a couple of what we refer to as the flow maps. So this on the screen is a flow map of an application. So we've deployed to multiple tiers here. So the languages such as Python, PHP, Java, .NET, C++, we've automatically discovered all of those downstream systems. So those databases, those caching mechanisms, those external web cloud services, those REST APIs and those queuing systems. And what we're doing is we're looking at the numbers. So we love numbers in AppDynamics. And what we're doing is we're baselining every element of these. So the couple of seconds calls between here, the milliseconds calls between here. And what we're doing is we're collecting all those that information and we're baselining that information. So what AppDynamics is interested in doing is getting a feel for what normal looks like. And when we understand normal, it enables us to spot anything that deviates from normal. And again, what happens when you first deploy our agents straight away on day one, we will learn what your application looks like and then spot any problems as and when they happen. So to give you an example of a, a baseline in action, if I pick on this particular call out here, out to Visa, let's zoom into that one. My focus on that, you can see the call coming out of my commerce layer, calling off to visa.com. It's typically on average takes about 200 milliseconds to execute. If it was to go over that, so if it was to go over 240 milliseconds, so three standard deviations outside of what we define as norm, then we'd flag it as amber, as a little bit of a problem needs attention. If it was to hit the red, then it would flag up very clearly that this needs attention. This is not normal. This is not behaving as it should do on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, very important, most of the monitoring systems that you see these days, if you see a red, it's pretty much game over. Pack your bags and head off home. With an app dynamics, it's just that little bit easier to get back from the brink when we go red. So you can detect problems before they potentially become an outage. Let's close that down. Let's uh, switch to, uh, I've got a nice little app here that I know has got a couple of little issues on it. So again, um, having a look at our baselines there, we're going to focus on what we refer to as the transaction score. So we're looking at the last two hours worth of traffic on my application. What you can see here is a, a large expanse of green. Green's great. Green's normal. We don't really worry too much about normal. Unless normal is, for example, a you know, 10 second transaction, you can use App Dynamics to diagnose those 10 seconds and get it down to something slightly more reasonable. But what we're really interested in App Dynamics is this, the stuff at the top, the nasty ambers and the yellows and the reds and the stalls. So effectively, the very slows, the slows, the stalls and the errors in which we see in our applications. And as you see in here, I, over the last couple of hours, I've had two kind of incidents that have caused this orange to increase. So again, if I bring in back the, that lovely green, you can see the drop in throughput, a massive increase in our response times, as well as that sudden bulge in the orange. So we're gonna go through and diagnose what's caused that. So let's whip back to our dashboard. Let's bring in some of the other metrics that we can see um, in App Dynamics. Let's go for the last hour or so. We can see and refer to metrics such as load, response time, even see our error rates. So all applications have a kind of a natural level of errors within them. And again, what AppDynamics is doing is identifying when that error rate increases outside the bounds of normal. We're going to go in and we talked about transaction scoring. We're going to delve into this in a little bit more detail in a minute and how we do snapshots and those capabilities. But just first, I want to take you into the concepts that we discussed of business transactions. So as I delve into business transactions, what we see here, and let's hide the original names for now, what we see here are 
the transactions in which someone in the business, for example, would mention, um, refer to them as. So if you're looking at a retail bank, it's a login, a check balance, transfer money. If it's an e-commerce application, it's a search for an item and add to cart. And all importantly, in this case, a checkout transaction. These are all automatically discovered. And at best, the most amount of configuration you have to do is actually change the name from kind of their technical name to their meaningful business transaction name. Now, by virtue of doing that, you can then decide which transactions to focus on. In this case, we've got one uh, flagging up issue in our fetch catalog. It's a bit of a problematic issue, but it's, it's not actually core to our business. Core to our business is the ability to essentially check out. So let's zoom in to check out. And take a look at that particular call and as we do we can see where well, this is where most of our problems actually happening so 75 percent of our transactions we've graded as effectively normal but a number of those so 25 percent are falling into this nasty bucket where they're suddenly performing badly so what we do is we take what we refer to as snapshots and a snapshot is a capture of everything about that particular transaction in that moment in time. It's about the code that's being executed under the hood. It's about the SQL. It's about the infrastructure on which that runs upon. And it's about any other supporting diagnostic level bits of information. So let's pick one of these uh, transaction snapshots and go and drill into the underlying detail of what's actually going on in here. What we're provided with now is a complete view of a single user's transaction. This isn't an aggregation like we've seen previously. This is a single user's transaction. So much so we can even tell which internet browser they're actually using. So they're having the joy of using a, an Internet Explorer 9 here. And it's taking 41 seconds on those downstream systems to actually execute that single transaction. What we've got here on the left hand side is we bubble up what we refer to as potential issues. So this is highlighting without even having to drill into the code what's potentially going on on the back end. What we also have here is this is called the waterfall view. So I've seen over the, the last few years an increase in asynchronous programming. So whether you're using a Scala and Acre or a Play or you're using some of the latest uh, Microsoft.NET libraries, so like the uh, Task Parallel Library, the Async Await All APIs and all those sorts of things, we started to see this massive increase in asynchronicity. So diagnosing asynchronous applications in live is becoming as problematic as diagnosing those standard applications in live. So what we're going to do, let's drill into our, our particular performance issue. And I'm actually going to start right on the front end so we can see all about how we traverse and trace each one of these transactions. So as I drill into that 41 second call, I can actually see, yep, I'm spending eight seconds on that particular downstream call, eight seconds on that one as well. Multiple calls, in fact, they seem to be going to the same web service API. So again, I should review architecturally whether we need to make all those round, round trips as they were. We can have a look at our server. So we can go and have a look at all those underlying metrics of our individual servers that we've actually got. So we can check, is it because CPU is running hot? And in this case, no, not at all. Have we got any memory issues? Have we got any network IO issues? Was our server actually available during the duration of this transaction? Are we running out of disk space? Have we got that classic problem that we've got a log file that's just filling up and filling up our individual systems? Have we got a virus scanner or a backup utility that's running at the same time causing a performance issue? We can also delve into some diagnostic data behind the scenes. So we're actually capturing in this particular circumstance some information about this transaction to give it more context than just being a load of spinning code. So it's Tim Cook. Um, he's buying some stuff to the value of $59 on our site. And he's actually a platinum user. So he's one of the guys that we really have to look after. So let's go and see what's causing problems with Tim's application. So what you can do here is we can drill into any one of these, either from the call graph, so the problem in situ, or we can actually have a look at where it occurs here. So actually, that's pretty interesting. We've got a 16 second call that's happening up here. So let's go and have a look at our underlying web service itself that's doing that call. 
and let's follow where that actually goes. So as I click onto this downstream call, we can actually see again it's creating two create order calls on the back end. So let's drill, drill downstream into one of those. And here we are, we've actually discovered where our eight seconds are being spent. It's actually a call out to our database, so let's go and inspect that. And we get right down to the SQL that's happening under the hood. Obfuscated out, of course, because we don't need any of that or want any of that personable identifiable information at this stage. So we can actually get in and diagnose our SQL query. We can review all of the SQL that's being executed on here. So we can actually uh, have a look at both the database and the remote service calls. And again, we can see highlighted here is the SQL that's causing the problems. If we had any database connection issues or those sorts of things, they'd also be highlighted here as well. So what we've done immediately is we've got straight to the bottom of our performance issues. We've identified a slow running SQL. Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to take a trip into the database itself so we can drill down directly into the database to really understand what's going on in there as well. So we've identified that our database is our source of our bottleneck and even potentially we could identify that query as being problematic. But let's take a more holistic view of what's going on in there. Now, this is a, a classic one we always hear about, about one of those 11 a.m. reports that someone's running for, for the boss or one of those things where someone in ops is just uh, being told to go and have a look at that live database. Just run this SQL query. It'll be fine. Oh, don't worry. If you make a mistake, it's only read only. But what happens is in this particular circumstance, someone's actually doing that. They're running a piece of SQL at the same time that our app's trying to run and do its work. So let's go and have a look into this one as well. So a fairly seemingly innocuous SQL call going into our database, running fairly regularly. But when we delve into the explain plan behind this particular database, we can then actually go and see what's really happening. So in this case, we're actually cause, causing the database to query to about 10 million rows, returning what we refer to as a Cartesian join. So what we've done immediately is we've delved into the database from the context of our application. We've actually now spotted there's a there's a very nasty SQL query that's been run that's actually slowing down the whole of our application. We've been from our flow maps, we've diagnosed some of the uh, performance issues by having a look into our snapshots. Let's come out of uh, our land a little bit more and go and have a look at the end user experience. The end user experience agent is a JavaScript agent that's embedded into our web application. We also cover mobile applications as well by embedding a SDK either into your Android or your iOS applications to give you full view into that end user experience. So if I focus now on the, the browser side of things, uh, we've got an interesting couple of problems happening on our, our retail site. So what we're going to do is delve into the end user experience here. Again, we present a lot of metrics related to our end user experience in addition to which browsers are being used, which devices people are coming in off of, where our top activity is occurring, popular pages. From a performance perspective, we're very interested in statistics like percentiles. So it'll be interesting to know what the, the spread of say our 50th through to our 90th percentile, i.e. 50% um, of our user base up to 90% of our user base are experiencing quite a spread in terms of their performance. We can review our end user response time. And on this map here, it's indicating quite clearly the UK is having a problem. So let's, again, kind of zoom into some of the detail on a much grander geo map of this. And let's understand where that performance issue is actually occurring. So as you zoom in very clearly here, we can identify the problems in the United Kingdom. Um, this actually mimics a performance issue that we saw with, uh, it's a large high street retailer um, in the UK. Um, so thus we chose the UK as our example. Um, and what had actually happened is they'd had a CDN outage and this CDN hosted their um, product images, which went when customers were logging in and actually browsing through the site, they were able to actually see um, the pages themselves, but they couldn't actually see the individual product pictures that were being held on there. 
So as I go and inspect again these snapshots, let's go and take a look what we're seeing here. So we're getting 18 seconds. We've already diagnosed that there's about 10 seconds or so actually on the on the back end. But we can also see that we've got a large resource fetch time happening on the front end as well. Again, what we're collecting here is things like DOM ready first byte time. We're also interested in if you're running HTTPS, the actual SSL connection times, which all combine to give us an overall end user response time. We'll delve into the resource fetch time shortly. We can just have a look. And in this case, this particular user is using Firefox 36. They're coming in off Windows. We can even find out it's Candice is the particular user that's coming on through. So what we're going to do, let's go and have a look at the resource details. And exactly as I inferred a minute ago, uh, we've got the slow back end that we're already aware of our checkout transaction itself. But looking at the front end, we've also got this really poor CDN performance coming through. So it took a total of uh, 22 seconds to actually load the resources from that. And I could happily count to 22 on this call, but I'm sure you'll get very bored with that coming through. So what we've done in this quick demonstration, we've seen the flow map of our application. We've delved into the business transactions themselves. So we've had a look at our checkout transaction all the way through to diagnosing in a snapshot what's actually happening in that transaction all the way down to lines of code. We've then gone into the database to have a look at all the other queries that are running on there that could be impacting your application, even to the point of finding out the one that was being run. So it was our early morning report to give back to the e-commerce director. We've also then gone to investigate our end user experience to go and have a look at what was happening in there. And the key thing is to then present this information back to the business via a number of, of key dashboards capabilities. So whether you're an executive who wants to get a, a basic view of their overall business, whether you want to get a more detailed user journey level view of what's actually happening within your application and the key steps. And again, you can publish these dashboards on iOS devices, on Android devices. You can actually use the App Dynamics app to actually access some of these individual user dashboards. Or you can design your own dashboards for operations to actually run alongside yourselves. So for example, that can bubble up key metrics and information about your individual applications. So on here, if I can revert to my, uh, here's my e-commerce application. So key business metrics like our sales and what our revenue's been like, highlighting the impact of some of our uh, outages on checkout, dropping the amount of sales that we've made on those two key problematic pages, and also reviewing like our very popular t-shirts in this actual case, and also a summary of our our transactions effectively. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll speak to you soon. Bye.